Hey what's up YouTubers, it's Dansky and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to design a privacy selector UI in Adobe Illustrator. So to start with I've got my document here, it's 3000 pixels high and 3000 pixels wide, plenty of space to work with. I'm going to paste in the image for our content. So here is a photo of my son Leo and I'm going to scale him down just left clicking on one of the corner points and holding shift and alt to scale towards the center. So there he is, very cute, we'll pop him over to one side for a second just so we can focus on the interface design. So we're going to select our rectangle tool and left click and drag anywhere on the artboard. Let's create a shape something like this. And just for now, I'm going to select in the swatches palette. I'm just going to pick any kind of gray, just because it's quite good to just use different shades of gray when wireframing up a layout. And then once you've got the layout finalized, you can start to add the color and a bit more polish to the design. So I'm now going to select the rectangle tool again. And I'm going to left click and hold shift to create a perfect square. Actually, I'm going to do a circle. Let's select our ellipse tool left click and hold shift to create a perfect circle and we'll just pick another shade of grey so we'll go a bit darker for this one and if you've got your smart guides on up at view down to smart guides if you can see that little tick when you try and align these elements together you'll see here that it snaps into place with the pink guides so I know that this circle is vertically aligned to the center here so they're very handy now I'm going to select the type tool left click anywhere on the artboard and just type super cute photo of Leo and I've got Myriad Pro selected as the font uh, I'm just going to change that just to Arial nice and basic and I'm going to pick a different font size So there we go, we've got the title of our content. This is where our photo is going to go. So now we're gonna create the privacy slider. So we're gonna select the line segment tool, left click and hold shift to draw a perfectly horizontal line. Now at the moment it has no fill or no stroke. So if we just select the stroke here, and for now we'll just make this black. Just go into the stroke palette, thicken that width up a little bit. So we'll go for something like this. And we'll drag that down underneath the content, underneath the title rather. And then if we select our ellipse tool, just click and hold shift to create another circle. Now it's created it with this line width. That's okay, but that's not what we want. So if we select this circle and just swap the fill on the stroke, it will then make the black color our fill. And for now, again, just as a temporary measure, I'm just gonna select blue and then I can left click and hold shift and alt to drag across and make a copy and then do the same again for the end. So there we go, very basic, all starting to come together. So now I'm just going to add this photo to the mask here. So if I click on this circle, we're going to go to object, arrange, bring to front. So that is on top of everything and I can drag the photo of Leo behind. Now you'll see that it's actually behind the gray box that contains everything. So we want to bring it forward just one step. So if we go to object, arrange, and bring forward, it will just bring it in front of that. And then with the photo selected and holding shift to select this circle, we can go up to object, down to clipping mask and select make. And when we click make, it will crop the photo of Leo inside the circle. There we go. Aww. So that's cute. It's a bit big. So if I just double click this, I can now go inside the image. You'll see here that I've gone inside the layer and inside the clip group and holding alt and shift, I can scale down from the top right or any of the four corners just to bring that scale down a bit. So it's not so, uh, so big and just nudge that into position with the arrow keys. 
And then when you're happy with your crop, you just click this arrow a couple of times and it will take you back out. So now I can move this around and he will stay cropped within that circle. So now we're going to work on the slider a bit more. So I think let's pick a green. So if we just double click any green swatch, select global and preview, pick a nice shade of green. I know that's a bit subjective. What, what is a nice shade of green for me might be absolutely awful for you. But nonetheless, I'm going to go with this one. So I hope you like it. If you don't, you're perfectly entitled to pick another shade of green. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to make this one green as well. Now we're going to start adding bits of color to our design. So make sure that now we've just selected the black line, we swap from the fill to the stroke. So at the moment we have the fill selected, which is nothing. Now we want to make sure we select the stroke. And I think let's change the color of this to shade of gray. Let's double click that for now. We'll make that swatch global. So if we do need to update this color at a later time, then we can easily adjust it in the swatches palette. So I'm going to select this box around the edge now, and I'm going to make sure I select the fill and we'll make that box white. Now this does blend into the background. So what I'm going to do is select that box again, go up to effect, down to stylize and select drop shadow. Just tick the preview box and you'll be able to fiddle around with the settings until you get something like this. So the opacity, we don't want this to be a really bold drop shadow, just enough that it lifts the white box that contains everything off of the background. So really subtle. Now offsetting the shadow, at the moment if the offset was zero and zero, the shadow would have no offset and would appear equally around all of the edges. But what I want to do is in this tutorial offset this slightly to the right and then down a bit. So something like this. So it just pushes that shadow out to the right a bit and then down a bit. And the blur is how, how, well, how blurred the shadow is. So if I set this to one, you'll see that it's quite hard. If I set it to zero, it's absolutely solid. There's no blur whatsoever. So I've set it to about 25, just so it's a bit softer. You can change the color if you like, but for this example, I've kept it as black. So it just helps lift the UI design off of the white page. Now we're gonna go and finish this bit now. So we've got the line here that runs through. Let's go and change this blue on the end. So we want this to match the same color as the line here, this gray line, because this is something that is unselected, whereas the first two have been selected, if that makes sense. So let's get rid of that blue color and we'll fill it with the gray. Now, if we select the line and we're going to go to edit, copy, edit, paste in place, make sure we select the stroke and we're going to change this to green, the same green that we've used before. And then if we use our direct selection tool, just click off of any objects to deselect them and then left click once on this anchor point on the right and then using the arrow keys you can just nudge this back over so it only shows these first two stages so what we're going to do now is select our text we've already selected our font of Arial, so let's keep it that way just go to edit copy edit paste in place and we'll just drag that down holding shift to keep it straight and select our type tool and let's type friends now we want to keep these central underneath each of these little circles so if we just select central the line center here and we can just bring this down in size a bit once we've positioned these under these little circles, if we change the text, it will all stay central, which is great. So 
So then what we can do now is just add some other text in. This is all dummy text. It's really more about focusing on the design so you can change yours as you need to. Let's change this one to everyone, whoever everyone is. And I'm going to make the text here a little bit thinner. So let's try a different font. I'm going to go for Helvetica Light just because it's got a nice light typeface. I can left click and hold shift to select all three of these. And we'll go for Helvetica as well. These are smaller, so I don't want the light version of those. I want to keep them regular just so they are legible at that smaller size. If the text is quite small and it's very light and very thin, it can be harder to read, uh, particularly on things like mobile devices when it's being displayed very small. Now this is all very squashed here, so I'm just going to click this rectangle and just drag this out to the right just to give it a bit more space. And then I can left click on these different elements and hold shift to multiple select. And then I can actually go up to object and group and then I can just move this around freely and grouping it together just makes it very easy to select again at a later date and I haven't got to manually go through and select all the different elements so let's just bring that in a little bit and I think under here I'm just going to type our first album as well. In fact, what I can do now is I want this to be styled the same as this. So I can actually select the eyedropper tool and just click on this text and it will match that formatting. Notice that it's centrally aligned it, so I want to left align that one because it matches all of the formatting, even the alignment. So something like that I think looks good. I'm going to give this a lighter grey. The focus is on the title here, so I'm just going to give this text underneath a different colour. Remember we can double click that and make that a global swatch. And then I'm going to make these two under here green. And this one on the right, that lighter shade of grey. And there we go. We've created a privacy selector UI design in Adobe Illustrator. As always guys, please feel free to leave any questions or comments below. Like this video if you enjoyed it. Take care and I'll see you next time.